Good afternoon, Ames Chamber of Commerce members. This is Drew Camp, Director of Public Policy for the Ames Chamber of Commerce, here for our March 8th and our first funnel week legislative update. A few bills that I want to go through, it's going to be very similar to the ones we went through last week to kind of see the status of them, but I also have added a few to really just touch on which ones made it through and which ones did not make it through funnel. Jumping right in, one of our priority bills for workforce development and one of the governor and legislators' priorities bills is Future Ready Iowa. That passed the Appropriations Subcommittee on February 21st and awaits debate by the full committee, but since, since it, is, it is an appropriations bill, it will remain alive for the entire, entire session and it's funnel proof. Uh, we're hoping that it will continue to move forward and we expect it to. It had broad uh, unanimous support last year. We expect the funding of the, uh, the two scholarship funds and innovation funds within that to be appropriated and receive full support this year as well. The Empire Power Rural Iowa Initiative, which is another priority of the governor and lieutenant governor, passed a House Ways and Means Subcommittee on Wednesday, and as a Ways and Means bill, it is funnel proof as well. The bill will make changes to the broadband policy and state code, and it will also increase the amount of workforce housing tax credits available to rural areas specifically, and will make the workforce housing program competitive, which is definitely needed as they had a large backlog when they kind of just did a, a queued system, and that was an, a major issue for Iowa Economic Development Authority and applicants for the program. We do expect to see some changes in the legislation, especially due to the, especially, um, for the broadband language, but we are in support of that bill and we are also in support of Future Ready Iowa. The SAVE bill for the school infrastructure sales tax penny uh, extension has been placed on the House Ways and Means calendar, remains alive for the remainder of session. We expect it to pass this session, unlike it did last session uh, when it did not make it at the very end of this uh, before adjournment, but we do expect that bill to pass this session and we are for that bill as well. The remote worker bill is one I talked about last week as well. It hasn't seen any action since January 21st when the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee passed the bill, but that also as an appropriations bill remains alive for the remainder of the session. We're undecided on that, but really monitoring that and any other bills that would uh, increase population for the state of Iowa. Bioscience, bioscience based economy bill. Uh, that passed the Senate Commerce Committee on February 11th and did make it through the first funnel wait debates. It awaits debate on the House floor, excuse me, the Senate floor. and. We are undecided on that bill, but monitoring it because it has implications for Iowa State and uh, University of Iowa and a lot of the different entities within those um, specific institutions that deal with bioscience-based economies, all of which we are largely a part of as that's one of our target industries. I will for a water quality and the funding of the Natural Resource and Outdoor Recreation Trust Fund. That did not make it through the first funnel. It did not pass out of a House Natural Resources Subcommittee or committee. Um, so it did not make it through the first funnel. We were undecided on that bill, uh, but it will not make it through to be considered for the remainder of session. The section 179 cleanup bill, which deals with depreciation uh, for and bonus depreciation and offsets for companies that buy equipment and things along those lines, largely contractors, things like that. Uh, that remains alive for the entire session as the Senate Ways and Means Bill, and it did pass a subcommittee on February 4th, but has not been acted on since, but once again, as a Ways and Means Bill, remains alive for the whole session. That's an important tax cleanup bill for many of our members. Uh, nuisance abatement, it passed the Senate Local Government Committee and made it through the first funnel. Um, that's something we'll continue to monitor as it allows communities to really deal with some nuisance properties, which is important to a lot of communities throughout the state. The alternative project delivery uh, passed the state government subcommittee on February 6th that did not pass the full committee, so it did not make it out of the first funnel. We were undecided on that bill. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act unfortunately did pass the Senate Local Government Committee. The House bill did not pass, but the Senate bill did, um, and it will remain alive through the first funnel. Hopefully we can get that killed in the second funnel, as that's really a bill that we never like to see come across our desks, just because it really does not foster an environment for diversity, and it really can cause liability issues for a lot of companies as well, and those are things obviously that we never want to see in the state, and it could also impact attraction and retention efforts as well. The House property tax bill is funnel proof as a ways and means bill and we continue to monitor that as we await a bill from the Senate and kind of see what the grand bargain, so to speak, may be on a property tax uh, bill and if in fact TIF would be involved in that property tax backfill, all things that are hugely important to us, our partners at the city, the school districts, and the county. So we want to make sure that we're watching those bills very closely. I know that'll be an issue we'll discuss at day at the Capitol on the 14th next week. And then finally, the House and Senate land acquisition bills, that was something that came up uh, for quite a bit of discussion at our legislative luncheon last week. The House bill died in subcommittee on Monday. It did not make it out. That was the more expansive bill that uh, was even more concerning to a lot of counties and cities. But the Senate bill did make it through 
um, the first funnel and it was amended in Senate Natural Resources and the Environment Committee on Monday. And what that will do, what the bill passed out of the committee will do, uh, will, well, the original bill would have ended both the charitable contribution, contra, conservation tax credit and the use of the state revolving fund for water quality projects. Uh, in subcommittee, we were able to kind of fight that back a little bit to get it to just say that the amendment uh, not a, not did not take those two things away. It simply re it restored the charitable tax uh, charitable tax credit and allows entities that have the state revolving fund eligible projects to enroll them into the charitable tax credit program until July 1st of 2019 or the start of FY 2020, which is that same day. And then it will not allow users going forward. We're monitoring both of those bills. Um, because that's once again a bill that's a concern to um, the, the county and the city because it monitors and kind of uh, sets requirements on how they can do land acquisition for public projects. So that, in, uh, that concludes our, my report on legislation. I do also want to remind you, please do try to find time in your calendar next week if you're available on Thursday from 11 to 1, 11.30 to 1 o'clock. We'll be having Ames Day at the Capitol and serving Hickory Park down um, at the Iowa State Capitol in the Rotunda. So please feel free to join us. That's open to all individuals. And we will also be meeting with legislative leadership with some of our leadership from the Ames Chamber of Commerce uh, on that day as well in the morning. So we look forward to that and hope that you'll be able to join us. And then also, if you're not able to join us today at the Capitol, we hope you'll join us back next week for our next uh, legislative update on March 15th. Thank you and have a nice weekend.